Hey everybody! I wanted to do a quick video to show you how to prepare paint for a Dutch pour. I've already done um, this other video showing you how I mix my paint for most acrylic pours, mixing with Floetrol and water to achieve a nice flowing effect. For Dutch pours you need a thinner consistency of paint. So I've mixed my paint in the same way as my other video shows, except I use a little bit more Floetrol. So depending on the brand of paint used and the consistency of the paint used, I use anywhere from two to three parts of Floetrol for each part of paint, which means if I'm adding one ounce of paint, I would add two or three ounces of Floetrol, depending on if it's a thick paint or a thin paint. So something like Apple Barrel is a thinner paint, and uh, I would use two parts of Floetrol to one part of paint. Do you see how nice and thin this is? This is a nice Dutch pour consistency. For a thicker paint, like a tube paint, or a higher quality paint, you'd want three parts of Floetrol to one part of paint, and then you add water until it's the consistency that you want. So this is a metallic color, and it's one that I know from experience, if it looks the same consistency as the others, it's actually too thin. So this one I mixed slightly thicker. Um, I've got this other one, I don't know that you can even see. The cup is so dark it's hard to see that one. But I'll show you here with the white. This is my base coat. Um, you see it flows? Oh. It flows nicely, of course. Now it doesn't behave. It always does that whenever I do a video. It's working perfectly for me, and then I go to show you. All right, let me set it here. So it flows easily off of the stick and just makes a tiny little stream. It doesn't really mound up much. Tiny bit. Um, one of the ways that I can tell if it's thin enough is if you drop it from a height and it kind of drops in. I don't know if you can see that. It's easier to see if you use a spoon. If you drop it from a height and it starts out by going in and then as the stream gets less, then it comes back to the top just a little bit, that's the right consistency. If it always sits on the top, it's too thick. If it's always dropping in and never sitting on the top, then it's a little too thin. Okay, so I've showed you what it looks like. Oh, if you're mixing a large cup, especially of your base color, I recommend using a plastic spoon so that you can mix it really well all the way to the bottom of the cup. In this one, I only needed a popsicle stick because it was a small cup. You really don't want to have thick paint down at the bottom and thinner paint at the top because then if you add more paint later, you'll have different textures showing up on your canvas instead of a nice, smooth base. Okay, so here's the way, because all of these paints, they look like they're the right consistency, but the way that you find out for sure is with something called a drip test. So I have just a piece of scrap paper here that I folded in half so it stands up a little better. And um, I'm just gonna put one one little drop of paint and I'm trying to keep them the same size. <clears throat> one drop of paint per color um, and then we'll stand it up and see how far and how fast the paints flow down the vertical page. And that's a good way of telling you are your paints mixed the same, or is one of them way too thick, is one of them way too thin, stuff like that. Okay, so I have my five colors there. Let me stand it up for you, and we'll just let that flow for a minute. So, so far, none of the paint has started actually trickling down. But I can see the drop kind of forming 
at the bottom of the circle. So right now they're all looking about the same consistency, which is good. I'll give it another minute and then we will we'll compare them. Okay, so that's been just a couple minutes. So as you can see, the white and the Caribbean blue have both dripped somewhat. The Caribbean is slightly thinner, the white is pretty close though, and then right here at the end, this metallic sea mist has started forming a drip. So these three are all pretty close, but these two, neither of them quite formed a drip, so I would add just a little bit of water to both of these colors of paint. That's what this drip test would tell me. Your drips do not all have to be the exact length because paints are gonna behave differently. You just don't want one that's got a drip way down to here and one that doesn't have a drip at all because the one that's too thin might completely disappear and be taken over by the ones that are too thick. So the drip test helps you just check that all your paints are in the same range and then you can do your Dutch bore. Now let me show you one other test really quick, because sometimes if you have one paint that's too watery, it'll kind of sink into the other colors and will get this almost like cloudy ring around the outside. So to help check if any of our colors are too thin compared to the base paint, what I'm gonna do is just here on the same piece of paper pour a little little base coat and then I'm going to just put a drop of each color and we'll let it sit for a minute and see if any of those colors start to get that cloudy ring. And I'm doing this now before I add the extra water to the metallic teal and the dark navy just because if either of these colors are getting cloudy in the white already, I definitely don't want to add more water to them to thin them out. So I'm just checking that everything's fine, and then I'll add a little bit of water to these, and then I'll check them again on that. So let's give this a minute, give it a chance to kind of sink in, and then we'll see what happens. All right, let me show you this. Let's see if you can see that. Make sure it's focused. Okay, so the metallic teal is perfect. This one right here. There's no sort of cloudy ring there. The metallic sea mist is actually making a bit of a ring, but because it's such a light color, it's not super noticeable. So I'm definitely not gonna add more water to that. I wasn't planning on it anyway. I could add a little bit more paint if I wanted it to be more solid and not flow like it's doing. So I'll have to decide before I actually do the painting. This Caribbean is making just a very slight clouded effect. And the same with this dark navy. It's sinking just a little bit. So even though this dark navy did not flow down like the other colors in the drip test, I'm not going to add more water because I don't want it to go more cloudy than that. This is a relatively acceptable level of cloudiness. Um, but anyway, so this is another test that can help you determine before you put all the paint on your canvas if they're going to play nicely with each other. And I will give you a close-up picture of this just in case the video didn't show it very well. But anyway, so those are the basics. Uh, some people do Dutch pours with just paint and water, which you can do as long as your paint is high quality paint. If you're using less expensive paint, craft paint level paint, um, adding Floetrol to it helps make better effects than just paint and water. So one part paint, to two or three parts flow draw depending on the consistency of your paint and then thin it with water until it flows nicely then do a drip test and this kind of puddle test and you are good to go.